So my name is Julian Gilmore and I work at the National Amyloidosis Centre at University College London and I'm, I'm going to present the results of the Attribute CM trial which is a trial of acaramidis in uh, eight patients with ATTR amyloid cardiomyopathy. Transthyretin or ATTR amyloid cardiomyopathy is a progressive and fatal disease. The current treatments or the approved current treatment consists of tefamidis, which is a small molecule drug which stabilizes the TTR protein and has been shown to reduce mortality and cardiovascular hospitalizations and slow the decline of uh, you know, patient func functional um, assessments in patients. So really that's the only uh, disease modifying therapy that is available. And one of the problems with tefamidis is it's available in some countries across the world, but you know, the availability is not, is not throughout the world. Does it work? So uh, the study drug was acaramidis, and acaramidis is also like tefamidis, a small molecule stabilizer of the TTR protein. So the mechanism of action is relatively similar to tefamidis, although Acaramidis, the new drug, is based on a known TTR variant, which has been shown to protect patients from developing this disease. So this was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial of 30 months treatment duration. The patient population were um, patients with a TTR amyloid cardiomyopathy diagnosed either by a heart biopsy or what we call non-invasively and NYHA class one to three heart failure. 632 patients were randomized two to one, acaramidis to placebo, and tefamidis was permitted, the use of open label tefamidis was permitted, but only after 12 months. And that was dependent on local availability and at the discretion of the investigator. The primary endpoint was a hierarchical um, evaluation using the Fingelstein Schoenfeld method of all cause mortality, cardiovascular hospitalizations, change in NT pro BMP from baseline, and um, change in six minute walk distance. The study met its primary endpoint with a highly statistically significant p value of less than 0 0.0001. Importantly, 58% of the win ratio ties were broken by the first two components of the primary endpoint, so all-cause mortality and cardiovascular hospitalizations. And a separate analysis using those two components of the primary endpoint alone was statistically significant. And the results were consistent across subgroups and the po with the point estimates consistently if you like, favoring acaramidis over placebo, and the confidence intervals you know, um, to, the, to the right of unity, if you like, so favoring acaramidis. No safety concerns at all. The uh, treatment emergent adverse events were well balanced between the two arms, and actually, with respect to treatment emergent, uh, serious adverse events favored acaramidis. I think the main take-home me message is that we yeah, we now have a second effective drug to treat this condition and it's going to be very exciting to be able to treat patients with another drug that has been shown to be effective. So I think there's still room for improvement um, in terms of the treatment of this condition and you know, there is a lot of research focusing on drugs to accelerate the removal of existing amyloid. What Acaramidis and tefamidis, what those drugs do is they slow, pro slow ongoing formation of amyloid. But there's a lot of focus on drugs to accelerate the removal. So I think that's probably the future.